As it seems, I apparently cannot have a nice Dell Dimension 8300. Some of you who might remember the first video I made about a Dell Dimension 8300 that I bought brand new will remember that I said that it just never performed like it should. In fact, it seemed more than anything else like it got severely I.O. bound. And downgrading to a Pentium 4 Northwood processor definitely helped, as did some newer hard drives, but all in all, it's never performed like it ought to. Well, the nice thing is that Time and eBay make everything cheap, and apparently no one's paying attention to the stove, so turn the buzzer off. Stop it. Anyway, Time and eBay make things cheap, so I bought another one just to see if things were really as bleak as I'd expected. And it turns out this machine is an entirely competent performer. I gave it a few upgrades to put it on the par with my first one, including a rather unusual and probably somewhat rare Pentium 4 Northwood processor clocked at 3.2 gigahertz, made at a time when the Prescott was already firmly entrenched. There's supposedly a 3.4 gigahertz version as well, but I've never actually seen it. So I stuck with something that I could get. I also installed a slightly newer NVIDIA 6200 60, GE, I think it is, video card to give this thing to give this thing a little more kick in the graphics department and to make it better for playing rigs of rods because this is the computer that I keep in my bedroom when I'm not using a laptop and it has definitely proven the point that the Dimension 8300 that I bought brand new must have some kind of a problem unfortunately this is the part I was getting to and I don't know if one of the uh, YouTube commenters who hasn't liked my videos or has just had something dumb to say, which thankfully has been very rare, I don't know if some of the, someone I annoyed or one of those commenters or something like that uh, did not like my response to them, but apparently someone put a hex, a decimal on me, because this machine has blown out capacitors right near the power supply for the processor. And so those probably ought to be replaced because they could smoke a whole lot of things in quick succession. Now they didn't fail because of capacitor plague or anything like that. I mean they're high quality, name brand, I believe they're Nishikon capacitors. And I don't think those were impacted. They failed because apparently sellers don't pay attention on eBay and they call something perfectly working just because it turns on and the power light turns green. Such was the case here. This secondary fan that cools the microprocessor had fallen completely out of place and I guess nobody ever noticed or heard the ticking sound it made or anything like that. So I put it back in place. That fixed everything. The system works and performs extremely well. But the problem is these capacitors are blown up and they will eventually fail. So tonight I'm going to go ahead and replace them tonight being January the 4th, 2011, and hopefully I can upload this video at some point in the near future. found some other interesting things in this system, too. It wouldn't turn on or off when I got it, but I could tell it was getting standby power. Well, lo and behold, somebody broke the holder for the ribbon cable going to the front panel controls. So if anybody's got one of those ribbon cables off of a similar machine, maybe just shoot me a comment. The people who owned it must have devised that intelligent workaround because to fix it, they simply removed the machine's ability to remember its power on state by pulling the CMOS backup battery so that it would always turn itself back on when power was applied to it. An interesting but completely incorrect fix. Anyway, I've got some new capacitors here. Got my solder, got my soldering iron. Need to find my desoldering iron. I need to get the motherboard out of there and start in working on this and hopefully this board won't take solder too badly alright and there's the motherboard out and Dell makes this part pretty easy because the motherboards on a tray that you lift up a green clip over here and Dell certainly loves their green clips and you lift that up and you just slide the motherboard tray back out so all I should have to do here is loosen this motherboard from the tray and it should come right off at least in theory this seems to be an earlier revision board than I'm used to because the Intel 875 Northbridge chip is actually big enough and mounted diamond-like that, uh, that it exceeds the boundaries of the heat sink. And my other system has a much newer re revision board in it and the 875 Northbridge is not that large. Now initially I have an early Dell catalog where the 8300 first appeared and no mention of serial ATA was made. But it seems that this board at least has it, and I imagine that all of them did. 
and that it was for later use. And here, of course, are the distressed capacitors. You can see that one has leaked electrolyte noticeably, and so has that one. And the tops were all swollen on them to some degree, and some of them still are. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these and replace them. I'm also going to use better quality replacements than are called for by using 105 degree Celsius rated parts as opposed to the 85 degree rating that these are because they get right next to that blast furnace of a Pentium 4 processor and keeping them as cool as we can is probably a very pertinent idea. So the other thing that's always interesting to me is uh, what a dog the Pentium 4 was. You know, even today, a decent Pentium 3, which certainly never had the clock speed that a Pentium 4 got, but when it runs the uh, when it runs most software, a Pentium 3 oftentimes feels a lot zippier. And in fact, Intel ended up throwing out all the Pentium 4 tooling and such, and opting to revise their microprocessors, which later became the Core series. There's that button. Intel later chose to use the Pentium M, which was itself based on the Pentium 3, as the basis for the Core, uh, Core Solo and Core Duo microprocessors, and of course the Core 2 and the Core i3, i5, and i7 that we all have today. They have much more in common, generationally speaking, with the Pentium 3 than they do the Pentium 4. All right, there's the first of several new capacitors. Got the leads run through the bottom, and they're ready to be soldered. Again, it was kind of a job getting these out of there. I hate working on motherboards. You'd think I'd learn. But that's the start of it, and I hope this will take solder better than the A-open board that I was working on. Okay, well this has certainly driven home the fact that I absolutely hate soldering on motherboards, and that solder doesn't look great. This board took solder better than the A-open one did. And so now we have a cute little row of newly installed capacitors. And with any luck, I can put this... Uh, see, Bizarre Furhead has got his uh, Ghostbuster shirt on for good luck. So with any luck, we won't have any ghosts in this machine when I put it all back together and power it up again. And I don't think I even managed to install any of those backwards, which is good for extra points. Okay, and there's the board mounted back on its little tray. So now it's ready to go back into the computer where it belongs. Well, it's starting to look more and more like a computer every second. Just got to plug in a few expansion cards, put the slot covers back in, and everything should be set. Here we go. A bunch of bad capacitors, or capacitors that were getting close to being bad. Off the they've now been replaced. Now they're off to the trash cans where they're off to. Oddly enough, they were 100 and, uh, 105 degrees Celsius rated, which kind of surprises me. But then again, at one time, Dell did build quality equipment, and although Dell seemed to have had a uh, motherboard design facility of your own, this is basically an Intel board. Just modified to meet Dell's requirements, like their special audio connector down there, which I'll quit blinding the camera with the flashlight, and the special front panel connector, and special fan monitoring and stuff like that. But there we have it. Let's go give this thing a try and see what goes boom. Okay, let's see what happens here. Turned on. It's always a good sign. Oh yeah, video card. Probably going to tell me if the system options aren't set because the battery's been out of it. Yep. Better run setup. Straighten it out here. Set the time of date and all that good stuff. Okay, so with the time and date set we should be able to save the changes get out a setup and see what happens here. But it certainly ought to boot into Windows. Now this machine does have suspicious memory in it that I need to replace under warranty. One of the DIMMs is flaky, so it's been known to crash on that account occasionally. But I guess I haven't really been bothered enough to force myself to go ahead and submit it for RMA, so... But we'll see here. I expect it'll boot up. Yep, there it goes. So I'll just log on to the system here, and we'll see what happens. All right, well, everybody generally seems to be happy. Everything seems to be working okay, so I would imagine that that is another job well done, although just barely, I'll promise you that.